welcome into this emergency edition of the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated and best and coolest sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Thanks for joining us. This was supposed to be an off day, but the Blackhawks drop a news bomb on us. Uh, so it's me and Greg Boyson with you today. Give us a like in the uh, YouTube page. Smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're subscribed and following where, you're, where you get your podcasts as well. Uh, Mario is parenting. I uh, have to be very careful. The lesson I learned as a young father is you never say you're babysitting your own child. You are parenting. Sure. <laughs> so just it, for those of you that are not dads yet, don't say I can't go out. I have to babysit. Nope. You are parenting. You are parenting. And that's exactly what Mario is doing. So uh, he's here in spirit, and I know he's active on social media, so check him out at Mario underscore Tirabasi. So the news today uh, came down right about 1230 on the dot. Uh, Lucas Reichel has been sent to Rockford, and um, I've had some conversations since then. And, um, you know, they want Reichel to play in the top six. They want him playing in all situations. They want him playing against uh, the opponent's best defense. Um, okay. Fine. I think if you say Lucas Reichel's playing against the Colorado Avalanche's third pair, um, that's probably better than the Colorado Eagles' first pair. Uh, So I don't really buy that. I think that they saw Lucas Reichel play and said, "Uh uh-oh, he's good. We've got to maintain the tank, and hopefully some of the people that were upset about the uh, three-game winning streak are are feeling okay about this because it's pretty clear if you read between the lines that, wow, this kid is uh, probably a little better than we thought he was going to be. And uh, we might need to might need to pump the brakes on the old call up here. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, the, the emergency. It's not a franchise emergency that Lucas Reichel's going on. It's just our CHO term to say, "Hey, we weren't supposed to have a show today on a show, but now we're having." Yeah. So yeah, bonus breaking news, emergency podcast, whatever you want to call it. Lucas Reichel going to Rockford is not an emergency by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's not great. But, like, okay, I understand the plan is Lucas Reichel plays the entire season in Rockford, so Lucas Reichel and Connor Bedard could be on the same line next year. I am 100 million percent behind that idea. But the optics aren't great. Um, Now there's some other issues that I'm concerned with. As far as, like, Reichel playing in Rockford, fine. It is what it is. Hey, you want to get him top six minutes against the best competition? Okay. Yeah, you've got the convenient excuse of Patrick Kane's coming back, and Patrick Kane's got to play in the top six. Okay. But you can't put Taylor Radish on the freaking third line. You can't put Andres Athanasiu on the third line. Keep that top line together and put Kane with Taves and whatever other guy they want to throw out there. I know Taylor Radish is, like, tied for second in goals right now, which is an indictment on this roster. No offense, Taylor Radish. You're a fine human being and a nice hockey player but you shouldn't be leading an NHL team in goals this far into the season. Yeah. Put him on the third line. Taylor Radish, uh, Jason Dickinson, Sam Lafferty. That sounds like a pretty decent third line to me. So this whole thing that Lucas Reichel, there's no room for him on the top six right now. So he has to go back to Rockford. (laughs) That's a load of crap. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Look, they can't say that, right? (laughs) You you can't have, you can't have, Luke Richardson or Kyle Davidson come out and say, you know, frankly, uh, Lucas was a little too good for what we're trying to do here. And we need to send him down. I get it. They're going to say the right things. They're going to say, hey, here's the thing. And fine. I get it. Right. After last night, three wins in a row, they're impressive against Colorado. There's a certain percentage of Hawks fans that are freaking out because they've won three in a row. The object here is Connor Bedard, and the object here is to finish with the worst record. And if Reichel's going to prevent you from doing that, which he would, maybe, then you got to send him down. Here's my issue, okay? My issue is, how is Lucas Reichel feeling right now? Mm -hmm. Lucas Reichel comes in. He has a terrific game against Arizona. Doesn't get on the score sheet. Has a three-point net against Calgary. Last night, his minutes are reduced big time because uh, they're on the special teams so much. And power play one has has a lot of possession. They don't score, but they've got the puck a lot, so they don't really get the ch- a chance to put power play two out there. And now he's sent down, and he's like, what do I have to do? What do I have to do here? And Luke Richardson is saying things like, it's going to be a while. We want to give him an extended look. Three games is not an extended look. 
I'm sorry. It's just not. And I'm not blaming Luke for it. But to me, the fear is Lucas Reichel says, F this, trade me. Yeah. That scares me. I That's one of my two major concerns about this whole thing. What does this kid have to do to stay in the NHL? Uh, he's been, uh, quite frankly, the last three games, more dangerous than Patrick Kane has been in the last three or four weeks. Uh, he's been your best player. That line with Domi and Kershev, him and Kershev have got something going on right now. And, you know, it's all good. Um, so I get it. You can't come out and say, Lucas Reichel's too good. We're trying to lose on purpose. And he's he's counterproductive to that goal right now. You can't say that. So you have the built-in luxury of, well, Patrick Kane's coming back Saturday night. And Lucas Reichel, we don't want it. We'd rather have him playing top line Rockford than fourth line Chicago. Okay, sure. Yeah. I It is, it is like, hopefully... They have been in constant contact with Lucas and talking to him and telling him and reassuring him that this is just all part of the plan. It's okay. This is not a slight on you. Getting to know Lucas a little bit for covering half the Rockford Ice Hawks season last year before March and a little bit. I don't think he's an irrational young man. He's a very smart young man. He knows yeah. what's going on, but he's also a very competitive young man as in, as in anybody who is a professional athlete and he wants to play in the NHL. So hopefully he understands this. Hopefully he gets this and he's not getting angry, but it, at some point I fear, like you just said, Jay, that he's going to start getting frustrated with this. You know, you've, you've, you used you burned up the first year of his ECL, you know, entry level contract last year to play him in two meaningless games, and then sent him back. Yeah, you're pretty much burning the second year here. That's fine. If Rockford wins a Calder Cup this year, Lucas Reichel's an All Star. He helps you win a Calder Cup and gets four rounds of playoff experience. That's gravy. That's awesome. But at some point, the competitor in Lucas Reichel is going to start going, man, why am I still playing my spending my weekends in Iowa? I should be, you know, in Edmonton playing with the Blackhawks or great. Another trip to Grand Rapids. Can't freaking wait to spend six hours on a bus. Like I, I, I'm, I, I'm I think I have a good feel of who Lucas Reichel is. and I don't think it's going to get to that point, but. Sometimes it's just, it's hard. He can't be happy right now. There's no way he woke up this morning. Maybe he was told last night. Maybe he was told this morning. He can't be happy. He can understand it. And I hope he's not happy. I hope he's not content. Yeah. yeah. And the I other, just, part, you know, uh, Reichel aside too, is we talked about last night, you know, in, in light of the three game winning streak and the Hawks playing well and playing hard and how it makes guys on the team feel good and feel like their hard work is paying off. How are the guys in that room feeling right now? They're like, wait a minute. This kid came up and he was great. He made all of us better. He came up. We've won every game he's been in. He's been one of our most effective players. And now they're sending him down. Like yeah. the, the, the concern. Look, I get the point and I'm down with the point. I'm down with, with the Hawks being the worst team in hockey. We all signed up for it. It's what we all want. You know, however worried we were last night. Fine. We get it. We get the idea and we get why you're doing it. But if that's the case, then don't call him up in the first place. Right? Kane goes down. Cool. We're without Patrick Kane for a few days. Three more guaranteed losses. We'll call up Josiah Slavin or, hey, Michael Tepley's earned a look. Whatever it is, then don't call Reichel up because it was the same Kyle Davidson that said before the season, hey, hey, hey. We're not calling him up now, but guess what? When he's here, he's here to stay. Wink, finger guns. That's, you know what I mean? It's it's not it's, it's not what happened. And right. guess what? Lucas Reichel heard him say that too. That's that's my second concern. Uh, and one before before I address that, is your point to the guys in the room, the twenty two guys in the room, they don't give a flying f about Connor Bedard. No, they don't care because a lot of these guys aren't going to be here come March, let alone next September to play with him. They don't care. This is a team that's won three games in a row. They've been getting their ass handed to him most of the season. They're finally starting to feel good. They're finally, here's your ass. Yes. They are finally, they are finally feeling good. They're getting rewarded for all the work they've been putting in. And then the best thing that happened to them all season is sent back to the minors. That's got to be frustrating for them too. I'm sure again, they understand it, but they don't care where the Blackhawks draft this summer they don't no 
Jake McCabe doesn't care. <laughs> Jake McCabe wants to win hockey games. Like, you know, do you think Boris Kachuk gives a rat's ass at the, the Connor Bedard? He ain't going to be here next year. Probably going like, to stop a rat's ass on him, but point taken. <laughs> But seriously, so that you're affecting the room in other ways. And grant and, and again, I'm okay with this move. I wish I could be shouting and angry and outraged. I, I was I was like, okay, this is kind of stupid, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna be our buddy AJ from the from the uh DNVR av show and, and just go on an F bomb weighted rant <laughs> because because frankly that, that was the thing that was a thing um so if you if you want to take a little satisfaction in pissing <laughs> off avalanche fans watch the dnvr abs post game show from last night uh don't watch it in front of your kids or at work um so yeah it's it's but you 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 hinted my other concern my first concern was reichel his mental state and it's kyle davidson the man that has said, when he's here, he's here. Now, granted, he again, he's got the built-in excuse. We, oh, we needed him to fill in for Tays. We needed him to fill in for Kane. These weren't his real call-ups. Mm-hmm. You, told him, you told us when he was here, he's going to be here, and now he's not. We just had a discussion a week ago. Can we start to trust T- Kyle Davidson yet? This is one of those things where you're like, well, you know what? Now, pre- I'm going to preface this. You should always take what any professional sports yes. team general manager says with a grain of salt. It's never gospel. I'm, I'm not that naive. But when your first big things you say is going to happen and then you backtrack on it and you do the 360, it's not a great look. Um, he he's also, got, it's time for him to speak. Exactly. He needs to be I, out in front of this. He, is, he, is, yeah. he has been in his office too long. Um, I know he's given a couple one-on-ones to some of the media outlets, but most general managers are make themselves visible every couple of weeks. Speaking before a game, make yourself available. When you make a move like this and there are yep. a lot of questions arise, would have been a perfect time to say, okay, let's do a Zoom meeting with our, our beat reporters and get some questions out there and address this. Um, so that's a little disappointing. Hopefully stuff like that changes uh, you know he's he's proven time and time again that he's not afraid to make unpopular decisions he's got he's got the stones to, to do things that will, will upset fans but he's thinking big picture and i love that about him but when you make those unpopular moves you got to get out and, and face face the music a little bit and, yep. and answer for it and he i know he, i know he's not going to come out even if he had a press conference today i could i could give you the press conference right here he's not going to say we're tanking He's too good. He's right. going to say exactly what we were told. He needs yeah. to play top six minutes. So, you know, it. Uh, yeah, those are my two biggest concerns. The mental state of, of Lucas Reichel and then kind of the, you know, bait and switch from Kyle Davidson. But again, he's got the built in luxurious excuse of it was an injury replacement. It wasn't a legit call up. Sure. Uh, a couple of good questions here. And thanks to region rev for the uh, $5 super chat. She says European players hold playing for their country. Very important. Germany finally getting the league back. I hope he finds a better organization. He's, he's a Hawk. He's not, yeah, he's no. not going anywhere. I don't like Greg said, it's not his personality to go kicking down Kyle Davidson's door and say, F you trade me right now. That's not going to happen. But I just, I just worry about the, the, the spirit of the kid who's done everything you've asked him to do with a smile on his face comes up for Patrick Kane and lights it up, you know, point per game and is very effective. And now he's got to go back to Rockford and it, it's disheartening and you worry about the impact on him. We also had a comment from German Hawks fan uh, a little bit earlier. If Lawrence could throw that up, he was saying, you know, something along the lines of uh, where is the evidence that tanking works? Edmonton, Buffalo and Phoenix are all serial tankers. What do they have to show for it? Nothing. I'm not convinced tanking for an 18% chance is worth it. Well, here's the difference. Um, the Blackhawks are not Edmonton, Buffalo, or Phoenix in any way, shape, or form. They have shown they're willing to pay top dollar for free agents. They've shown they are committed to winning. They have shown that they are a free agent destination. None of those three markets have that going for them. The Hawks had to rebuild because the last guy had screwed the pooch so badly that there was really no other option. This is the only way the Hawks are going to get back to contention. Unless you want the Hawks to be the Nashville Predators for the next 10 to 15 years, which is, hey, maybe we sneak into the playoffs every few years, and maybe just maybe we upset somebody in the first round. That's it. You're never going to get back to the Stanley Cup. The goal here is to get back to the Stanley Cup, and this is really the only way 
that the Hawks can get there based on where they are now because you had no NHL talent, you had no prospects, and remember, going into last year's draft, the Nazar Korchinski Renzel draft, the Hawks had exactly zero first round picks going into that day. That day, they had zero first round picks. That shows you how badly uh, Snowman uh, left this team before he left. So the only way out of this is exactly what Kyle Davidson's doing. And I will say, if you want to like silver lining this thing, it shows you that he is still 100% committed to making this team as bad as possible and doing everything he can possibly do in his power to get counter Bedard. That's it to send Reichel down that you want to talk about having some stones for Kyle Davidson to send Lucas Reichel down today takes massive stones. Yeah. Three wins in a row. He got the biggest crowd pop at the announcement last night. People were there to see Lucas Reichel and he's saying, well, you know what? This is not going the way I thought it was. Back to Rockford, you go, kid. You're screwing up our plans here. Yep. Uh, we need I, to start. I, I I give him credit for that. Um, uh, but evident, uh, you know, he's not uh, he who should not be named and say, hey, we're going to go younger. And then the next summer go, no, nope. <laughs> I was just kidding. Here's Mark andre Fleury and Seth Jones and Jake McCabe. We're going to try to be a playoff team again. So he's sticking to his plan. I'll give him uh, I, I kudos for that. As far as, you know, the, the evidence that tankings don't work in Edmonton, they got Connor McDavid, Connor freaking McDavid by tanking. Yeah, sure. They haven't won a Stanley Cup since, but that's that's on Ken Holland, not putting a good enough team around Connor McDavid. Um, By the way, I, I believe that roster is vastly underachieved. Yeah, um, for sure. And goaltending is, is is there has been their Achilles heel. If they, get, if they get average goaltending in the playoffs. They got. I think Connor McDavid wins a cup in Edmonton before it's all said and done. That's that's a that's a Ken Holland problem, not a tanking problem. Um, you know, Toronto tanked. They got that awesome Matthews. You're gonna say that didn't work because they haven't gotten out of the first round. So, and I get it. It only gets you an 18 percent chance. Getting tired of that nonsense. What else are you gonna do? What else are you gonna do? Yeah, all you can do is give yourself the. What is your alternative to that? Re-signing Mark Andre Fleury, getting a couple veterans, finishing tenth in the Western Conference, and drafting fifteenth, so you can do the same goddamn thing every year. You don't want to be pass. It is Nashville is the worst place to be. Yeah, I did that in the night. I did that in the nineties. It sucked. Yeah, it wasn't fun. There's no way out of it. There's no no way out of it. The tank may or may not work. Only time can tell. But at least for the first time in a dozen years, there's a plan, and I can I'm, I'm on board with that. So we'll see. Do they get Do they get counter counter Bedard? Maybe they got about a 25 percent chance to land it. I'll take my chances on that. Better than finishing in sixth place and drafting 14th and really rolling the dice on who you pick. Yeah, uh, let's get some uh, some questions in here before we wrap up. Greg uh, Chuckle Muggle says also the the rebuild key is to get multiple first and second round picks, not just solely targeting pick number one and making zero other moves for other high picks. That's exactly right. They've got at least two first round picks right now. Uh, one of them will almost certainly be a top three pick, um, which is great. Hopefully, it's number one. It'd be great if it's number two. Beyond that, eh. Fine, but not quite as exciting as it could be. But yeah, you've got a bunch of other picks too that you keep getting. D- d- remind me, second round pick for Jason Dickinson? Yeah, from the Canucks who are bad. That's going to be a pretty high second round pick. They got a second round pick with Jason Dickinson, and who yeah. knows who else they're going to you know who else they're going to pick up with the little small periphery moves uh, at the deadline. You're talking about Domi at Fantasyu. Their value is not going down. They're both still playing at a pretty high level. Max Domi's the team's leading scorer, you know, so it, it, they're going to have some value. So, yeah, picking up those picks is right. is a big deal. I, it is unclear. A couple of people asking, will Reichel play tonight uh, uh, for the Ice Hogs? I don't know the answer to that. If we find that answer, we'll let you know via Twitter. at yeah, CHP. I, I doubt it. They're in Colorado, um, so they may get him there today and sit him out and he'll play tomorrow, especially since the Hawks played last night. He'd play three days in a row. I don't know if you necessarily want to do that. I know he did that previously um, but when he got called up for that New Jersey day. Um, so, you know, um, 
Yeah, I, I doubt he'll play tonight, but I wouldn't rule it out completely. And no, we're not stopping with he who should not be named. When you get your own show, you can have your own bit. That's our bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we You know who we're talking about at this point. Um, plus, I've put so much money in there that I'm not just going to turn my back on it. A- <laughs> we're committed to the bit, damn it. Yeah. I think, I think it's time to buy us a pizza one night. Maybe it wouldn't be a West Coast game or something like that. I, um, you can never, yeah, you can I, never out talk me from getting a pizza. That's right, and I think uh, you know most people are understanding what's going on here. And uh, while in the short term it's very frustrating, and even for us, like we were really excited to be watching Lucas Reichel play every night because it was something exciting to talk about. And, and now that that's gone, so we're kind of back to the grind of uh, you know the next forty-two games here. Um, I don't know; it's tough, but it makes sense. In the context of you've got to do what you got to do to get Connor Bedard and, and put yourself in the best position to do it. And look, um, as un- unpopular as this move is, uh, you've got to at least give credit to Kyle Davidson for having the balls to make the move on a day like today when everyone in the city is feeling decent about the Hawks for the first time in a while. He says, "Ah, you know that was fun, but let's uh, let's get back to the old uh, losing streak here." <laughs> yeah. Now, the, as as much as it doesn't look good that you say he's when he's up, he's up to up to stay, and then he's not. It does look good that when he says, I'm committed to this rebuild plan, he's proven that without a shadow of a doubt. So that I'll give him a lot of credit for. I, I, I'm kind of meh about the move. I get the plan, but you're sticking to your guns. As long as you keep doing that through your tenure, then I'm not going to have too many things to complain about. And one more good question we got here from our buddy Paul T. He says, question, if Reichel looked just as good as he did the last three games, but the Hawks lost all of them, is he back in Rockford today? I don't think so. That's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that, quite frankly. Yeah, with Kane coming back, probably. That was their built-in excuse to give him a little taste. Yeah, true. I think I think if if it wasn't a Kane injury involved, maybe not. But I think this was pretty much pretty apparent that it's like you're here until 88's back and then Norris sends you back. And if they told him that when he got here, and you just, you know, don't say that publicly. If they told him that when he got here, then I'm again then then I'm Oh, I'm fine with everything that's happened too. If he was aware that, Hey, this is just until Patrick comes back, here's our plan. And he's, and he's on board with it. Then, then there's really nothing to really be that upset about. Uh, just got word, by the way, Lucas Reichel will not play tonight for Rockford, but he will play tomorrow. There you so go. No, no game uh, Friday night, but he will play Saturday. So there you go. There is your update. Uh, Reichel out tonight. Uh, and you. tonight's, uh, as as Region Rev mentioned in the chat a second ago, tonight's uh, Lucas Reichelis Ice Hogs game uh, is going is the free game on AHL TV tonight. So if you're looking for some hockey, you can still check out two other AHL All Stars, Brent Cini and and David Gust, and see how some of those young defensemen are doing. Alex Regula has been red hot lately. I think he's got like five points in his last four games. So you can check in on the Ice Hogs tonight for free if. Uh, your Friday night plans uh, aren't more exciting than that. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in. If you've missed it over the last few days, we have a date for our CHGO Blackhawks takeover of the United center, February 10th. It's a Friday night against the coyotes, a perfect night for a CHGO takeover info on how to get tickets to follow, but mark that date. That is for sure. It is locked in. The whole deal will include your ticket to the game and some other perks, some some food, some pregame meetups, all those sort of things. So don't go buying tickets to that game. Wait until we give you the info on how to buy tickets. And if you want to save on the CHGO takeover, become a diehard at allchgo.com. Diehard save on all things CHGO, including all of our merch at the CHGO locker and, of course, our takeovers and tailgates. So jump on that membership now. You get a free T-shirt or hat. Uh, as soon as you sign up, so that whichever shirt or hat you want, you get it right away. And again, the discounts and everything, it's really a great deal. And you get access to the best thing at allchgo.com, Greg and Mario's Rebuild Report, which is absolutely fabulous in-depth tracking of all of the Blackhawks prospects throughout the world. So you're going to want to jump on allchgo.com, become a diehard, so you get access to the Rebuild Report. So. Uh, With that, we're going to wrap things up. Thanks for jumping on here on this emergency podcast. Just know that's why we're here, right? Things like this happen. We're going to jump on. We're going to react as soon as we can kind of uh, scramble the jets and get everybody together. Um, We'll we'll do this stuff for you anytime it's warranted. So, hey, nobody else is doing that for you today. It's just us. So keep that in mind. Give us a like on your way out and tell your Hawks friends about 
the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Thanks to Lawrence for whipping this thing together so we can get it out for y'all. And uh, we'll talk to you after tomorrow night's game against the Kraken on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.